Years ago, a mysterious creature recognized as the Demon King appeared out of nowhere and unified the Western Continent with his supreme powers. Under his command, the Western Continent's army crossed the mountains and infiltrated the neighboring countries, declaring an all-out war. Fast forward to the present, things are the same with humanity battling against Demon King's army and somehow surviving. With all this going on, a beginner adventurer named Augusta enters the guild and gets moked by the people around him who call him the incompetent healer. Augusta, however, ignores them and approaches the main desk where the receptionist greets him. Augusta presents her with the herbs he had gathered with the receptionist praises him, stating that these herbs are tough to gather and still, he managed to collect this much. Hearing this, Augusta starts blushing and as the receptionist is signing some papers, she advises him that he should take on some other tasks that include beast hunting as their reward is much higher. This makes Augusta nervous as he tells her that taking up such tasks would be inconvenient for him and as they are conversing, someone interferes with their conversation, announcing that Augusta failed all of his previous tasks except for collecting herbs. Augusta immediately turns his head to see who it is and gets shocked seeing that Jalvin Platinum Cross Swordsman Alvin is standing behind him. Alvin, however, doesn't like Augusta calling him by his name and gets furious, stating that an incompetent healer like him who can't even heal doesn't deserve to call him by his first name. This shocks his receptionist as she couldn't comprehend how a healer cannot heal. Alvin further explains that despite being a healer, Augusta can't even perform basic healing magic and even if he forms a team, he will only drag down his teammates. He even claims that the lowest rank monster, a demonic rabbit, can kill him. The other adventurers who are hearing all this agree with Alvin, showering him with praise and mocking Augusta. In the midst of all this, a strange guy appears in the guild, shouting that the Demon King's army is attacking their town. Hearing this, the receptionist announces that in the state of emergency, all adventurers are bound to help with defending the city and that the guild will award them. This piques Augusta's interest as he asks the receptionist if he can join the battle as well. The receptionist, however, denies it, stating that only bronze rank adventurers and above are allowed to join the battle. But Augusta insists, asserting that he can at least protect himself. His conversation with the receptionist once again gets interrupted by Alvin who offers him to join him in this battle. Augusta immediately realizes that he wants to use him as bait and that he would be better off collecting herbs. Alvin, on the other hand, offers him half the special prize if he managed to lure the Demon King's army to the center of the town. Despite this offer, Augusta is suspicious and thinks that this is probably a SCM. The receptionist, however, reassures him that Alvin is not lying and that she will make sure he gets the half prize if he manages to lure the Demon King's army to the town center. Hearing this relieves Augusta as he agrees to Alvin's offer, thinking that he might be able to buy his sister a good meal with this money. After gathering in the town center, the other adventurers question Alvin if he is sure about sharing his prize money with Augusta. Alvin, however, reminds him that Augusta is just fodder and that he won't be able to lure the army, asking if they are underestimating the Demon King's army. With this, all the adventurers of the town get ready to battle the army and save their town. Augusta, on the other hand, has managed to lure a demon to the town and as he is heading towards the guild, the demon blocks his path using ice. With nowhere to run, the masked demon amasses a huge ball of ice to attack Augusta, but gets interrupted by Alvin who is waiting for this opportunity. He praises Augusta for doing a great job luring the army into town as he slashes the demon using his sword. Seeing this, Augusta starts jumping with joy as he thinks that he has completed his job and now he can get that prize money share. Alvin, however, has other intentions as he attacks Augusta and attempts to kill him. Augusta slightly dodges his attack and questions him regarding this. Alvin reminds him that the condition for him to get the prize money was if he stays alive. Hearing this, Augusta tells him that even if he manages to kill him, the guild won't let this pass, but Alvin mokes him, stating that the guild won't care about some dispensable beginner adventurer. He then apprises him that he will teach him the true meaning of an adventurer's duel. With all of this going on, the demon Alvin had supposedly killed stands up with Alvin attacking her once again, stating that she will become his strongest stepping stone. As Alvin approaches the demon, she slaps him right in the face and then grabs his face, smashing him into the ground. This worries Augusta as he approaches Alvin to see if he is alright, but Alvin somehow manages to stand up, announcing that he is the strongest swordsman. He once again attacks the demon, but she grabs the sword with her teeth, unleashing a massive attack that pulverizes Alvin. With no other option left, Augusta himself approaches the demon and kicks her mask away, revealing her face. The demon gets shotsikied by this and starts moking Augusta, calling him a loser in canon, asking what can a guy like him even do. Augusta, however, looks confident as he approaches the demon and attempts to heal her, which makes the demon laugh as she continues mocking him. However, it seems like she had underestimated him as she starts feeling some change in her body, and she starts smiling. But this happiness lasts for a short period of time as her body starts ballooning and she bursts. Augusta should have been happy with this, but he is disappointed as he failed to control his powers again and destroy the demon race crystal in the process. He could have sold the crystal to get some money, but now he has no money to pay for rent and take care of his sister. 
What's worse is that his level didn't increase. He is stuck as primordial healer oval 1. Following the battle against the Demon King's army, the adventurers gathered in the guild where someone handed Augusta his reward. Seeing the puny reward, Augusta argues that they agree to give him half the prize money if he manages to lure the army to the center of the city. But the other guy asks him to be content with the prize as Alvin took care of the army's leader, saving his life in the process and that if he cannot thank him, he shouldn't talk about stuff like money. This shocks Augusta as he continues to argue that he completed the mission assigned to him by Alvin and that he should get his share of money as promised. He further states that if he hadn't lured the army into the ambush area, it wouldn't have managed to win this war. Hearing this, the other guy and the adventurers watching him start mocking him, calling him lucky that he managed to survive this attack. Alvin, on the other hand, is wondering how Augusta managed to lure the army's leader to the town without getting killed or even injured. He thought that it was some random soldier and because of that, he almost lost his life. He doesn't even know who defeated the demon, but when the person who did that shows up, he will take care of him. Amidst all this, the receptionist interferes with the conversation, stating that she was the witness when Alvin made the deal with Augusta and that he should be handed over the promised prize. Alvin, however, tells her that multiple adventurers got injured in this battle and gave it their all, but Augusta remained unscathed as he didn't do anything during the battle. The receptionist still insists that Augusta still deserves the promised award as Alvin approaches him, telling him that he will always live in the shadows of other people and calling him an incompetent healer. With all of this going on, a mysterious adventurer enters the guild looking for a healer. Hearing this, Augusta volunteers to be her healer but warns her that he is just a beginner-level healer. The girl, however, rushes to him without any second thought and orders him to become her team member, dragging him outside. As he is getting dragged, Augusta tells her that he is a man of principle and not everyone can team up with him. He also reminds her that he won't be able to heal her at his current level and that she should team up with someone else. The girl, however, insists that she does not change what she has already decided and he is the one she needs. In the meantime, Alvin confronts her in his usual arrogant self, informing her that he is the strongest adventurer in this town and that she should bow before him if she wants to be forgiven. The girl, on the other hand, doesn't pay any attention to him and kicks him right in the nuts with Alvin falling to the ground in agonizing pain. Seeing this, his comrades draw their swords and approach the girl to attack her, accusing her of sneaking up on Alvin while he's injured. The girl also draws her sword, announcing that she will play with him for a while. Augusta, in the meantime, is enjoying all this. As the adventurers ambush her, the girl manages to defeat all of them with ease as she is slapping one of them. Alvin sneaks up on her and attacks her from behind. With this, the girl takes off her cloak and grabs his sword with her bare hands, stating that she won't play with him. She then unleashes her aura in anguish, throwing everyone away. As Augusta is trying to comprehend what just happened, the receptionist recognizes the girl as God's chosen one, the blood princess Angela. Angela, on the other hand, picks up a healing potion dropped by some adventurer and drinks it. Hearing the receptionist's announcement, all the adventurers laying on the ground, including Alvin, start begging for her forgiveness. After drinking the potion, Angela asks Augusta if he still wants to team up with her as she doesn't need his help anymore. Augusta still agrees to team up with her after hearing that she is the strongest chosen one in the entire continent and latches onto her thighs with Angela kicking him out of the facility. Following this, both head to the failing Leaf Mountain for a mission where Angela hits two beasts while the other two run away. Seeing all the effort that it takes for Angela to just deal with two beasts, Augusta asks her if she is really the chosen one and wonders why it took her so much effort to face such weak level monsters. Angela takes a deep breath and orders Augusta to cut the crap and gather the crystal core, apprising that she is the in charge of killing the monster and Augusta is in charge of the loot because that's how it was decided between them. Hearing this, Augusta calls Angela by the name Godmother, asking her to not misunderstand him and that he does not have an opinion that would challenge Angela as he proceeds to pick him up the crystal and tells Angela that she should take a break. This angers Angela as she tells Augusta that he should not call her by the name Godmother, reminding him that her name is Angela. While picking up the crystal, Augusta thinks himself that the strength Angela now possesses is quite different from the strength she possessed when she fought with all those men in the hall. According to him, Angela is somehow weaker now and if it takes her so much effort to deal with such measly monsters, it makes him wonder whether she's just an iron rank adventurer and not the god's chosen one. Augusta thinks to himself that if he utilizes his ability from a distance, he wouldn't have to go through all the trouble that he's going through. Seeing this, Angela inquires what is he doing to which he replies by stating that it's just a confirmation experiment. Angela seems confused but tells Augusta to not leave her sight or else she wouldn't be able to ensure his safety. As they are roaming around, Augusta and Angela hear a scream from far away which startles Augusta. Angela, on the other hand, states that it's not far from them, pointing in a direction and tells Augusta that she smells blood from that direction. She further tells him that the sound they just heard is also coming from that direction and that they should go and check it out. Augusta realizes that the direction is the same as their destination for this mission and agrees. Upon reaching their destination, Augusta is somewhat showcased after witnessing some demons with cloaks trying to 
performed some dark ritual on two captured and tied up villagers. Angela asks if the herbs they are supposed to collect are there with Augusta replying positively. Seeing this, Angela exclaims that whether it's for the sake of completing the mission or for the sake of the dead villagers, they have to kill these demons and takes out her sword. Augusta warns Angela that there can't be just these five demons around here and that there should be more which they fail to notice. Augusta suggests that they should try to find the guards around but is stunned to see Angela charging straight at the demons fiercely and without any fear in her eyes. Angela tells Augusta to talk less and that they should ambush them together which makes Augusta wonder if all chosen ones are so fierce. As Angela charges towards the demons, arrows are shot at her, but Angela takes them all out by a single strike from her sword. However, one of the arrows, resonating dark energy, strikes her as she gets knocked away by the blow. Seeing this, Augusta gets worried and wonders if Angela has died from this attack and whether she is actually just an iron rank. The thing that shows she kisses him the most is the fact that Angela is acting so impulsively against higher rank demons. With this, a strong demon appears out of nowhere and inquires about their identity with a mocking smirk on his face. Angela, now on her feet again, exclaims that it was a painful slash, but Augusta realizes that something is different and he starts to feel that Angela's strength is somehow increasing. The mysterious demon charges aggressively toward Angela, demanding their blood. Angela, however, sends him flying with a single strike of her sword, stating that his words are not qualified. She then charges and pierces his chest, which STUNs the demon as he wonders how can a human who couldn't even catch his moves just a little earlier is now overpowering him. Looking at this, the other demons shoot their arrows towards Angela, but without any hesitation with a single strike of her blade, not only does she destroy the arrows, but also the force generated through her blade cuts a couple of demons in half. Seeing all this, Augusta, who is watching all this, apprises that the power Angela now possesses is that of a gold rank, but he can't comprehend why. He thinks to himself that maybe Angela was just putting up an act a while ago, and that maybe this is her real strength. The apparent commander of demons suddenly gets back up again with anger in his expressions and roars with rage. Holding the magic crystal in his hand, he heals himself. This shocks his Augusta as he notices that the demon is directly using the power of magic crystal. The demon then approaches Angela and attacks her. And as she falls to the ground, Augusta gets worried about her partner, asking if she's okay to which she replies by stating that she's fine and that such a weak attack is of no problem for her. Angela suggests that they should destroy the summoning array as soon as possible, proposing that she will create chaos as distraction and in the meantime, Augusta can save the villagers in the eye of the array. Augusta agrees to this and tells her to be careful. Angela charges at the demon, calling him an ugly bastard and tells him that he should not think that he is the only one who can raise their strength. Looking at Angela's momentum, Augusta realizes that it is of platinum rank and that her level is going to reach Mithril. The demon swings his blade at Angela, but misses as she is too fast for him. This show kicks the demon as he wonders how he missed her with Angela mocking him as she floats in the sky. The demon swings his blade again, but Angela deflects it with her foot and makes a powerful swing of her blade, resonating slashing energy as more demons are cut in half by the swing. This makes the demon realize that they are getting overpowered and commands everyone to protect the summoning array. Angela proceeds to attack with her blade as another demon is cut in half, making the remaining demons trying to protect the array anxious. As Augusta is taking away the villager, one of the demon notices him and calls him a little mouse. Augusta mocks the demon stating that it's very nice of him to protect the summoning array as he proceeds to attack the demon with his beginner healing skill. Seeing this, the demon questions Augusta if he's an idiot and why is he healing his enemy on the battlefield, when suddenly the demon swells up and expel OBEs. This shocks both the commander of demons and Angela. Seeing this, Angela appreciates Augusta, stating that he did a great job of killing a demon sorcerer, even though he's just a beginner healer. Angela snaps back into the situation and announces that she can't afford to lose and that it's time for her to get a little serious. She uses both of her blades to generate a special attack, the crimson wind that kills off all the demons except the one in charge. The one remaining demon realizes that all the sacrifices are gone and gets shocked. Getting back up on his feet, he calls Angela a vile human and asks if she thinks she can stop the great demon from descending like this. Standing in the eye of the array, the demon calls out asterisk, O oh great demon god, please accept the sacrifice of your humble slave asterisk. Angela realizes that the demon is using himself as the sacrifice for the demon god to forcibly open the summoning array. Looking towards the sky, the demon chant his asterisk, great demon god, please accept my blood and soul asterisk, which creates strong dark energy and winds. This makes Angela realizes that it's too late now with Augusta exclaiming that the spatial gate of the summoning array has been formed, but Angela seems unfazed and tells Augusta that it's nothing to worry about and that the demon god is nothing but just a higher ranked demon, and there can't be a real demon god. Augusta, now worried, suggests that they should run away, and it's not the kind of enemy they can deal with. And finally, through the spatial gate, the demon king appears holding a battle axe with a strong, huge, muscular physique. Augusta gets anxious as the demon king appears, but Angela tells him to stay calm and to keep her bloodline safe at all times. 
Augusta tells Angela to wait, but just as he is about to say something, he gets interrupted by Angela who asks him whether he has not discovered her characteristics yet. Angela continues to describe that the more heavy she loses, the more powerful she gets, and against an enemy of this level, she needs to control her bloodline at about 10%. Angela commands Augusta to not worry and that he should obey what she says and there would be no problem. Angela further tells Augusta that she has run out of healing potion, so she relies on Augusta to do the healing while she tries to avoid fatal injuries but still be alive at a low HP. Just as Augusta is about to say something, he is interrupted again by Angela who tells him that he's a low-level beginner, and because of this his healing only adds a little hep, and that's just enough to keep her bloodline at 10% the whole time. Angela charges towards the Demon King while Augusta is left frustrated asking himself why can't Angela just wait for him to finish the sentence, and that his healing skill doesn't add less HP, but too much of it that caused the person to overheal and explode in the process. Demon King swings his bad legs at Angela who deflects it head on and charges towards the Demon King as she eventually manages to land a blow, but it adds to no effect on him and the Demon King stabs Angela with his horn. Just when Angela thinks that she has the Demon King in her reign, she swings his head violently, sending Angela flying and badly injures her. Augusta realizes that Angela's fighting style is way too messy and wonders whether she has always gone to battle like this despite her overall ability being increased. As he is lost in thoughts, Angela snaps Augusta back to reality and orders him to heal her quickly so that she can kill the Demon King in one go. The Demon King furiously throws the battle axes towards Angela to land a final blow. As the axes approach her, she realizes that it's not good for her, and she can't block an attack this heavy because of her at being too low, so she manages to avoid the attack and not take it head on. The Demon King stands over an anxious Augusta claiming that Angela has no chance of getting healed and that he would win if he kills Augusta. Seeing this, Angela yells at Augusta to watch out and uses her special technique Death Rush to rescue Augusta from Demon. King's Attack Angela coughs and tells Augusta that if he doesn't heal her, they'll both be done for. Augusta finally puts his hands on Angela's shoulders and uses his healing abilities. He tells her that the tree that burst opened suddenly, and the demon sorcerer who died violently were because he used his healing skills on them. Angela, now being healed, is shows he hate at the healing energy a beginner like Augusta possesses and wonders how this rapidly increasing hep to do Augusta's healing power is faster than a high-level energy potion. Augusta, on the other hand, is baffled to see that Angela is all okay and asks if she actually healed or not, to which she replies positively. She further comments that not even a high-level Ep potion can heal her fully like Augusta did and that she now has a good way to deal with her Epi. Accelerating to attack the Demon King, Angela orders Augusta to heal her when she asks for it. Augusta, however, wants her to wait, but before he can do anything, she advances O attack the Demon. Demon King, on the other hand, swings his bat leaks with Angela swinging her sword at the same time. Angela takes some damage but is healed immediately by Augusta. The Demon King gets infuriated seeing this, calling Angela an undead cockroach as he swings his axe once again and strikes Angela, but she's healed instantly again. This continues for a while as the Demon King keeps on attacking Angela, but she gets healed again and again by Augusta instantly. The Demon King, although furious, is also confused as to how Angela's HP bar is so useless that it doesn't fall to a certain level, but she keeps on healing again and again. The Demon King realizes something and lands a strong punch on Angela which confuses her as she commands Augusta to not heal her. The Demon King notices that she isn't healing anymore and tells her that she can't resist his blow in this current state. Demon King decides to end this once and for all proceeds to land the ending blow, but much to his surprise, Angela commands Augusta to heal her and that she's going to take the gamble to defeat the Demon King with 1% health. She uses her special technique asterisk blood burst skill asterisk and emits a huge energy blast that completely obliterates the Demon King and everything in a nearby radius even the ground. That is when Augusta realizes this is the God's Chosen One's true power. Following this, as Augusta chews on the herbs they gathered, he explains that it is the lowest level of hemostatic herbs, except for stopping the bleeding without any side effects. He further explains that it doesn't work on adventurers like him and Angela, but is one of the most commonly used herbs for ordinary people. Hearing this, Angela asks if this is the last herb as they need it for the mission, but Augusta being wise tells her that there are more in the deep, but they can't leave the two villagers alone. Augusta questions Angela regarding her final gamble, because in that last state, his healing amount should have caused Angela's body to explode. Angela answers that as long as she keeps losing blood faster than his healing, she can survive. Augusta is amazed as to how Angela measured his healing amount in such a short time. Angela tells Augusta that she figured this out during the battle, and that 1% of her HP is enough to kill the opponent, and that's all she was betting on. On hearing this, Augusta calls her a lunatic for betting on 1% HP. Angela explains that she is the god's chosen one, but because of her characteristics, she is both the strongest and the weakest and compares herself to Augusta, stating that they are quite similar since he is only a beginner-level healer that has the strongest amount of healing. 
so it can be said that he is the world's strongest LEVL1 support. Angela continues to explain that she needs to keep dropping her HP gradually in order to become stronger, but it's not suitable for her to lose too much blood in an instant. As for Augusta, his heal is high but slow because of which it acts as a chronic poison for the average person so only someone like Angela can sustain it. Angela exclaims that as long they can unite, they can become the strong GST and asks Augusta to team up with her because she needs him. Augusta is shocked at first, but then with an exciting smirk, he agrees to try it out. A man's body is lying on the ground with blood everywhere with a very young Augusta staring at it in such a CK and wondering why this happened when all he wanted was to help with healing. And suddenly he keys up realizing that it was all just a bad dream. Augusta makes breakfast for his little sister Anna and calls her out. Anna excitingly tells her brother that she has a big surprise for him today and reveals that Augusta's jacket that was torn is now all fixed. Augusta gets thrilled and puts the jacket on and exclaims that it's perfect. Anna curiously asks Augusta why he came late yesterday and if something had happened to which he replies negatively. Anna wonders if it was her fault and sadly exclaims that if she wasn't so weak she couldn't share the stress of her big brother, but Augusta calms her down and tells her that it's his duty as a big brother to take care of her young sister, and that if she wants to help him she should wait for her body to recuperate, to which Anna agrees. Augusta closes the door to leave the house and is jump scared from behind when Angela greets him with a UO. He thought it was a J-O's and starts shouting, but Angela finds it unpleasant and asks him if he has any manners. Angela explains that even though they did form a team, but they did not decide on a gathering location, so she came to August's house instead. Augusta teases Angela by asking her if she's not a pervert because squatting was the first thing that came to her mind while waiting outside his house. Angela exclaims that she was unaware of the situation. Augusta and Angela arrive at the guild and witness that an elf man is furious at Alvin, claiming that he heard it from Trisha that it was Alvin who sent her out on a trip last night. Alvin defends himself saying that he shouldn't be ridiculous and that he never left the room last night. The argument continues to which Alvin says that what has not been done is not done. Augusta asks from someone about what's going on to which the man replies that Trisha was called out last night by Alvin, but she never came back. The man further tells them that everyone knows Trisha has feelings for Alvin and Elfman doesn't accept it. This makes Augusta realize that it's a love problem. The team is disbanded by Alvin as he believes that they don't trust each other and Alvin walks out alone claiming that since the mission was taken by him, it is his responsibility alone to solve it. Augusta realizes that it's useless to think so much about an irrelevant situation when suddenly he is greeted by the receptionist. She asks Augusta how she can help him. To which he replies that he wants her to give the highest difficulty mission on this site. The receptionist offers a hunting mission deep inside the Black Smoke Mountains and tells him that there are relatively few magical beasts nearby, so he only needs to worry about hunting objects and that this is an A-plus level high difficulty mission. Just as Augusta is about to take the mission, he is stopped by Angela who tells him that it's a little inconvenient for such a difficult mission today and that perhaps a mission with a low difficulty would suit more. The receptionist recognizes Angela and asks her if she's okay to which she replies that she's fine and it's not a big deal. The receptionist offers another mission, this time a B-plus level hunting mission, but Angela tells her to lower it even more. The receptionist confused says that the only mission lower than this would be C-rank herb collector mission. Angela agrees to the mission and holding the map in her hands orders Augusta to follow her. A total of six beasts, all of which are miscellaneous grade magical beasts, they are not high level, but since they are collective, they are the most troublesome around here. As Augusta and Angela are observing them silently, Angela asks Augusta regarding their strategy. Augusta without any hesitation replies that they should all be destroyed at once and runs towards the beasts. Angela, however, wants him to wait, but he doesn't pay attention to her. Augusta mokes at the beasts standing in front of the beasts with a middle finger, calling them stupid pigs who eat, drink, and sleep, and that they should get up and do something if they have the guts. As soon as he looks behind to call Angela so that she can deal with the beasts, he sees her running away. This chokes him as he decides to flee away as well and the beasts start chasing both of them. Somehow they climb up a tree and escape the beasts. Augusta worried about what just happened asks Angela if something is bothering her because she has been acting strange today and if this group of beasts shouldn't be a threat for someone like her. Augusta addresses that everyone has their secrets that they are not willing to talk about but basic information shouldn't be concealed since both of them are working together and it puts his life in danger as well. As Angela explains to Augusta that the power of the Chosen One can only be used once in a witch show skicks him, as he comments that the combination of the weakest with the weakest is of no use if that's the case with her powers, to which Angela has no reaction except just telling him that it's not her fault, to which Augusta replies that they should continue with the mission and regretting over this is of no use. He holds out a cup towards Angela that is very stinky and explains to her that it is the scent that rattle wolves hate and since rattle wolves are the most troublesome beasts around here they as long as they have this scent 
it'll keep the rattle wolves away from them, and they'd be safe. They finally find the herbs needed for the mission which makes both Angela and Augusta happy because of the reward they'll receive and how they would be rich at this rate. Angela commands that they should head back but Augusta tells her that she hasn't done anything, when suddenly Angela steps on something and gets scared thinking that it is a magical beast. But Augusta realizes that it's not a magical beast and much to his surprise is Alvin lying unconscious on the ground. One day later, Augusta and Angela arrive at the guild again and the receptionist asks Angela why she is again taking on a mission of low ranks and she didn't seem much injured yesterday. The receptionist gives her the C-rank her mission. The receptionist continues to ask whether it's because she wants to relax for a while to which Angela replies positively, while Augusta watches this knowing the truth with a mocking look on his face. Alvin suddenly enters the guild and demands to take over the C-ranked her mission. The receptionist asks whether he wants to change his B-rank mission with Angela and Augusta, to which both Angela and Augusta furiously reply that there is no need for that. Alvin says that since Angela is the blood princess, a low-rank mission like this one would be a waste of her time. Augusta sarcastically asks Alvin that does he know that the name Blood Princess has another meaning which Alvin understands. Angela, however, doesn't understand what just happened. Alvin then decides to team up with Augusta and Angela in the meantime and shakes his hand with Angela asking her politely to advise him through this mission to which Angela agrees. On their mission, Alvin kills the beast with a single slash and this time around, with the help of this Pauliara fuel fighter, everything is going smooth for Augusta and his team. Augusta and Angela cheer for Alvin chanting that he is the beast. But he is annoyed by that and tells them to shut up as they are being too noisy. Upon reaching the guild, Augusta suggests that they should have a drink to which they all agree and have a cheers later on since they completed the mission successfully and got extra rewards too. They get better and better together as if they were together from the beginning. Augusta asks Alvin if he is okay in being with them all the time with Alvin counter-questioning him, asking if anything is wrong with that. Augusta explains Alvin that he is different from them and he has a lot of room to grow. Hearing this, Alvin slaps Augusta and tells him to not think of it as a big deal because this was his own decision and has nothing to do with anyone else. He further tells him that the pace now suits him more unlike before where the anxious him just seemed like a fool. This relives Augusta and as they are conversing, a group of men call out Alvin and one of the men commands that they need to talk to Alvin of the recent disappearance of their companion. Hearing this, Augusta anxiously tries to defend Alvin by stating that Alvin was with them the whole time. But he's interrupted by Alvin who tells him to shut up and that it's none of his business. Alvin declares that he would go with the men and whatever it is it has nothing to do with Augusta and Angela. As the men take Alvin with them he looks at Augusta and tells him that he is sorry for the delay, but he has paid back the favor. At night Augusta tries to investigate about the disappearances. He wonders that all the people disappeared are related somehow to Alvin, but whoever is responsible for the predator can't be Alvin since he was with them the whole time. He reflects on the fact that the culprit is acting every day and concludes that the predator is in a hurry and will act again today. While pondering, Angela appears and tells Augusta that she's been waiting for him, but he gets jump scared and yells ghost again just like the last time when Angela was outside his house because of which all of this feels like a deja vu to Angela. They both head out for the search. While running, Angela asks Augusta whether he has found the culprit's location to which he replies that he is not sure, but through the information he has gathered he can only determine a general location. On reaching the location, they find that Alvin is standing holding hands with the woman which shows seeks them. Alvin asks the woman if she's ready to which she utters yes, calling Alvin a lord, and with an evil smirk on his face, Alvin orders her to give her life. Just then, the real Alvin arrives charging at the fake Alvin and the girl snaps back into reality. She doesn't know where she is and the real Alvin orders her to run away and tell the others that a demon invasion has taken place. The doppelganger of Alvin, who is actually a demon, is surprised to see Alvin and wonders how did he get here since he was in an entanglement. Alvin confidently exclaims that a few idiots are not strong enough to stop him and that he'll settle with the demon for the past few days trouble at his cause. The demon, however, instantly overpowers Alvin grabbing him by its tentacles and tells him that he just wants some target to not escape but will kill Alvin now since he is standing in the way. He throws Alvin at Angela and they collide but to his surprise his target who is actually Augusta is also there. Laughing on the fact that he didn't need to make an effort at all to find his target, he grabs Augusta by the neck using its tentacles and manically exclaims that his lord didn't say that the target had to be alive and that he will suck Augusta dry and take him back as he continues to laugh. Just in the nick of time, Alvin arrives and with a firm swing, cuts off the tentacles of the demon holding Augusta. Angela catches Augusta and Alvin orders them to leave first and that he'll hold back the demon, but just then he gets stabbed by the demon's tentacle, which makes him puke and the demon throws him away with the swing of the tentacle. The demon mocks Augusta exclaiming that it's a touching friendship but no one will get out of here alive. Augusta, now in fury, 
tells the demon that has pissed him off. The demon, however, seems unfazed and tells Augusta that these would be his last words as he draws his tentacle to strike Augusta, yelling that he will die. But to his surprise, Augusta uses his healing ability on his tentacle from a distance, obliterating it completely. This shocks Angela as Augusta explains that healing spells are of two categories, the instant healing that has short range but fast healing and the slow healing that has short range but slow effect. The demon, on the other hand, is baffled and furious at this and proceeds to attack Augusta again. But this time around, Augusta again utilizes his healing technique to obliterate another tentacle. This makes the demon even more furious, as he can't seem to comprehend what's happening since Augusta is only a level 1 healer, yet so strong. With no other option, the demon proceeds with another futile attempt on Augusta, but yet again his efforts bear no fruit as Augusta obliterates his arm using his ability. In desperation, the demon tries hand-to-hand -hand combat with him, but Augusta grabs the demon, stating that hand-to-hand -hand combat is his advantage. Augusta uses his healing power to completely annihilate the demon as the demon swells up and bursts, causing an explosion. Angela admires that Augusta is really strong and Augusta calls her, so she can help him pick Alvin up and take him to another healer since Augusta can't use his healing abilities on Alvin. Alvin, taking his final breaths, apologizes to Augusta that he has caused him a lot of trouble and has looked down on him. Augusta tells him to stop apologizing as he has never cared about this kind of stuff and that he should hang on. Saying that he is sorry and Augusta must survive, Alvin falls to the ground and dies. Augusta, deeply saddened by this, holds Alvin and tries to heal him when Angela tells him that he's already dead. He screams in anguish on the death of Alvin. While Augusta and Angela are at Alvin's grave, Augusta, deeply saddened by the death of Alvin, utters cremation 50 copper, cemetery 50 copper, a total of one silver coin. This is the value of a person's life. He further states that as an adventurer, witnessing casualties is normal, and just as he's about to say something, he stops and tells Angela that he needs her help to take care of her sister while he's gone. Angela seems confused and asks him where he is going. He takes out a fragment of the spiritual core of his sister and explains to Angela how the demon had this fragment and that he needs to get his sister's spiritual core back from him. Angela doesn't understand much and asks what is going on with Augusta explaining to her the entire past. Augusta explains that seven years ago, he used to treat civilians in the territory through his healing power, and since he was an adopted child who wasn't qualified for inheritance, his family and castle treated him like family and didn't bully him for his adoption. One day, as he was away from the castle, treating civilians in the territory, he felt that something was off in the castle and everything was really quiet. He smelled blood coming from a room and upon investigating its source, he witnessed maids of the castle lying on the floor, unconscious. He tries to search for Bruce and Prima, but unfortunately, they had died by then. He still continues his search and after some time he comes across his sister Anna lying unconscious on the floor. He takes Anna in his arms crying and yelling for her to wake up when suddenly he hears her breathing. Hearing this, Augusta tries to heal Anna so that she becomes conscious again, but no matter how hard he tries he can't do anything. Augusta comes to realize that Anna had lost her spiritual core and since the spiritual core is the core of human life without it, Anna wouldn't survive. So as a last resort to save her, Augusta transferred his spiritual core into Anna so that she can at least be brought back to life, but Augusta knows that now he doesn't have much time and needs to find the man who has his sister's spiritual core. Upon hearing all this, Angela asks Augusta if he is the one without any spiritual core now to which he answered positively. Angela can't seem to understand how Augusta is still surviving without any spiritual core and questions him about it, but even he himself has no clue as to how he is still alive. All he knows is that after losing his spiritual core, he lost his original powers. Angela proceeds to wonder whether Augusta is God's chosen one as well, but realizes that his body is not strong enough to withstand the power of God's. Angela suggests that Augusta should come with her to Asterisk Omelopis Asterisk, and that she knows someone there who might be able to unlock the secrets of Augusta's body. Augusta hesitates, but Angela exclaims that since they are partners, his business is also her business, and that they are going to become the Strom GSTM together. Augusta and Angela arrive at Augusta's house, where on opening the door they get greeted by his sister, who asks him where he has been all this time. Augusta replies by stating that he went to take care of something as Angela notices Anna and asks Augusta if this is his sister he keeps talking about. Angela greets Anna telling her that it's nice to meet her and that his brother is teammates with her. Anna greets her back praising that it's nice to meet her when suddenly Angela grabs Anna in both arms and praises how cute and lovely she is. Seeing this, Augusta pulls Anna away and frankly tells Angela to not mess with his sister, to which she exclaims that she can't help it and is too pretty. Augusta informs Anna that starting tomorrow, Augusta and Angela are going on a trip to Omelopis. He adds that he doesn't know how long it will take and Omelopis is more dangerous compared to the town they live in. Hearing this, Anna starts crying and asks Augusta if she can come along and that she won't be a burden or cause any trouble for them. 
Seeing this, Augusta realizes that it's better to take his sister with him, since they agreed to be together all the time and Anna gets a smile on her face. The next day, Augusta tries to team up with a bunch of men, but they refuse telling Augusta that they don't have the energy to take care of others. According to him, teaming up with someone would save the money and be a lot safer, but now they'll need to spend some money to make the trip. Angela confidently claims that she has money and proceeds to take it out from her pouch, but soon is shocked to see that she literally has no money at all as she starts whining about her empty pouch. With all of this going on, they are offered to form a team by a bunch of men. These are the same men that Angela and Augusta encountered during the time with Alvin as a part of the team. Augusta is surprised and happy at the same time and can't believe it. The men tell them that it's compensation for what happened before. They reach Olympus and after bidding farewell, Augusta asks Angela regarding their destination to which she replies by pointing in a direction that's a lot further. Augusta questions whether they should check in at the inn first, but Angela proclaims that Shirley's place is also an inn which is much cheaper than the other inns around. Just as Angela proceeds to tell Augusta that he has to be mentally prepared to meet Shirley, they see a huge hothead man punch another man, yelling in rage that he hates people who do commissions for free without going through the inn. The man that was punched begs the other guy to forgive and asserts that he won't dare do it again, and the hothead man leaves, declaring that if something like this happens again, he won't spare him. Seeing this commotion, Angela interprets that Omepolis is more dangerous than she thought, but since it's a big city, so such a thing is inevitable. She further exclaims that it's getting late, and they should get going. Just then, Augusta notices that some lady is lying on the ground unconscious and asks her if she's alright. Angela, Augusta, Anna, and the stranger they found on the road eat at REI, which is apparently a restaurant. After finishing the food, the stranger apologizes for making them broke because of the huge bill, which was a result of the amount of food she ate. Angela tells her that it's rare to see people fall on the road because of hunger as Augusta stares at the bill. The stranger tells Augusta that there are situations that can't be explained. Hearing this, Angela responds without much thought and agrees to the stranger not explaining the circumstances. The stranger thanks the trio for their help and praises them that without their help she would have starved to death. Angela tells her to not worry about anything but Augusta is enraged because it was his money that was spent. Before leaving, the stranger introduces herself as Evely, and that she is an archer of iron rank and continues to say that if the trio needs any help from her in the future, they can come to her. As Evely leaves, a random man from the town explains to Augusta as to how Evely has fooled them and that she isn't actually homeless. The man explains that she was swept out of her house because her family couldn't stand her squatting all the time because of which she can't go home, but doesn't want to earn a living either, so she looks for targets everywhere that can buy her food. The man also tells them that Elevy didn't tell the trio where she lives because she didn't want to get caught. Augusta doesn't care much as he feels they would never meet her again. Angela, Augusta, and Anna reach the inn named Asterisk Underworld Pavilion Asterisk. Augusta notices that the name is quite old, on which Angela tells him that this is an old inn that has been rebuilt. Upon entering the inn, Angela notices her friend Shirley and calls out to her. As Shirley turns back, she notices Angela with a disgusted look on her face. Shirley asks Angela what she is doing at this place, but Angela tells her to not be heartless and asks if they aren't friends. Shirley, still having a look of disgust, replies that they aren't friends as Angela excitingly introduces Augusta and Anna as guests to Shirley. Upon hearing that guests have arrived at her place, Shirley's eyes light up, and she enthusiastically welcomes Augusta and Anna to the Underworld Pavilion and informs them that there are plenty of available rooms, and there's a discount if they decide to stay right now. Augusta asks if Shirley is the friend Angela was talking about and that she could help him find out what's wrong with his body. Shirley doesn't know what Augusta is talking about, so she asks Angela what her healer is trying to say. Augusta is confused since he never told Shirley about her profession, yet she called him a healer. Shirley explains that she realized that he's a healer by looking at him and further tells him that he's a level 1 healer based on his appearance. Augusta and Angela both praised Shirley's ability, but Shirley still seems confused as to what is happening. Augusta then explains everything to Shirley, how he is a beginner healer, and that for some reason he lost his spiritual core, and as a result of which he can't control his power anymore. Shirley does not believe what Augusta tells her and replies that it's impossible to live without a spiritual core, since he is just a level 1 healer. So why does he need a method to control his powers? Angela defends what Augusta just told Shirley, but Shirley says that it's impossible for her to believe something that she has never seen. Seeing how adamant Augusta and Angela are, Shirley brings out her magnesium crystal that is especially used to test magic power. She guides Augusta and tells him to put his hand on the crystal and then releases mana. She continues to explain how the changing colors of the crystal represent the attributes such as red is the fire attribute, blue is the water attribute, green is the wind attribute, and brown is the earth attribute, gold is the thunder attribute, while all the other attributes are dark purple and only the holy attributes are yellow. As Shirley is explaining that the white light means no attribute, she notices that the crystal is shining brighter and brighter only for her to realize that the crystal needs to be thrown away as it will explode any moment. She screams to throw away the crystal as she rushes toward Augusta, takes the crystal from his hands, throwing it just in time and enough away that the explosion doesn't harm them. 
Shirley couldn't believe what she just saw since a magnesium crystal is able to measure the magic power of steel or even heroic rank, then how come it exploded on the measuring the power of a beginner-level healer? She questions Augusta regarding his identity, to which he replies with a smile that he is Augusta Duzafu, a beginner healer. Angela then explains the basics of the spiritual core and tells them as to how the spiritual core is the root of all human power and it acts just as a container for the power one possesses. She continues that if one loses the container, the power will run out of control. So it is normal that Augusta can't control his power, but she is still confused whether there's a possibility that something like this can happen. Angela asks if there's a solution to Augusta's problem to which she replies that the power is Augusta's. Whether he possesses a spiritual core or not, it belongs to him alone and that one's power will not reject them. She exclaims that Augusta's power can be solved by him only and the reason he can't control it is because he's afraid of it. She adds that Augusta can become the strongest supporter if he can learn to control his power, but then ponders that the power actually isn't so much after all and that he'd still be a level one support when he learns to control it. Hearing all of this, Augusta questions himself whether he is really scared of his powers and as he is thinking about all this, Anna interrupts and asks them to pick a room first. Just then, Evely also arrives at the inn and is shocked to see Augusta and Angela there as well. She tries to run away but fails as Augusta catches her and tells her not to run. Augusta inquires that if she is so hungry that she can't afford to rat, how can she afford to stay at an inn? Evely, now caught, doesn't know how to respond and apologizes to Augusta for lying. Augusta tells her that he's not mad at her, but he feels bad about his feelings being played with Evely apologizes again instantly. Evely notices Anna standing quietly and starts cuddling her, calling her cute at which Augusta feels jealous and wonders why does everyone like to hold Anna. Evely states that she can't pay them back but offers Augusta an easy commission through which they can earn rewards and money. Evely unfolds the scroll to reveal a C-plus rank mega collection commissions. She informs them that there is no limit to the number of recruits and that they just need to complete it to get the reward. Angela questions if such a generous commission does exist, but is told that it is an official commission of the mansion. Evely describes that the more people there are, the less each person will get, but at the end of the day, it's all easy and free money. Angela finds the task simple and concludes that if they hide in the crowd, it would be easy to complete it without even killing a beast. But Augusta raises the question that what if someone else also thinks the same way they are thinking? Evely, in all enthusiasm, announces that she has the dream of making money in the easiest way and then live a life without working, and that if someone also stays back like them, it will retreat further. Augusta admires that Evely is a genius and both Augusta and Evely shake hands with one another. Evely describes that the number of people accepting the commission is large, however, since the route of the mine isn't straight, there are many side routes. She further adds that because of these routes, the number of people will gradually disperse along different routes, so it is important that they observe the movement of crowds at all times, and as long as they follow a large group, they will be able to ensure their safety. Evely and the group devise a strategy that one of them will always stand on top and observe the crowd at all times, so Augusta keeps Evely at the top. The strategy seems to be working for them and Augusta is joyful, feeling that the reward is easy to get. The other people feel a little jealous looking at their strategy for this commission. Evely, Augusta, and Angela start staying behind a group of men also trying to get the reward. They fight off a beast that emerges but are furious that the group isn't helping them at all and are here for easy money. Just then, a soldier-level monster appears. Seeing this, the group of men first decide to not be afraid of it and kill it, but on hearing the monster's roar, everyone starts running, including Augusta, Evely, and Angela. With all of this going on, another monster of the same level appears, and the group is now surrounded by two monsters with nowhere to hide. Evely, seeing this, starts putting up the fight and makes a strong cut on one of the monsters, which is praised by Angela. At the same time, Angela also strikes the other monster with her blade and kills it on spot, exclaiming that it was easy. Just as they feel the danger is averted, a whole pack of monsters appears from the den and starts chasing the group when suddenly a person appears and smashes his weapon on the ground, creating a huge wave that sends everyone flying away, including the monsters. As the dust settles, Augusta looks up and the man introduces himself as Harold Rupert Platinum Rank Barisarkir. Augusta yells at Harold that he almost hit them but suddenly realizes that the bunch of men that were with them are dead with blood everywhere. Evely realizes that the wound that caused their death wasn't from a monster with Angela noticing a strong stench of blood from the wound. With this, both of them turn around to look at Harold who has an evil grin on his face and concludes that the smell is coming from him. Harold acknowledges both the women stating that they are smart but not as smart as him and adds that he hates smart people. Augusta, shocked to see the sight of dead bodies, asks Harold why did he kill these people to which he replies that he came down here for the money and that is all that matters to him. Angela, now furious, tells him that even if that is the case he doesn't have to kill his own kind and that he is Shirai's eye. Hearing all this, Harold replies that her thoughts are naive and that's why people like her will be missling his fish forever. He continues to explain the 
Ideology that only a few people can stand at the top while others are just stepping stones. And it doesn't matter how many stepping stones he sacrifices as long as he gets something for himself. He further adds that weak people always like to team up, but they're easy to deal with, and that as long as he kills everyone, he'll get all the rewards. Harold tells the trio of Augusta, Angela, and Evely that there is an elite-level monster in the direction behind them and that is the only way to leave. Harold mockingly asks whether they want to be killed directly or by struggling as they attempt to get away from him. He then smashes his kanabo on the ground chanting Earth Bash, creating an explosion alongside powerful winds. Angela asks Augusta if he's alright to which he replies that he's fine and to not worry about him. The battle gets serious as Angela charges at Harold swinging her sword at him, but he blocks it easily with his kanabo with a moksi king face and uses his strength to overpower Angela, sending her flying. Just then, Ivly shoots an arrow at Harold but misses, and as she prepares herself again for a shot claiming that she won't miss this time, Harold glares at Ivly and tells her that she is annoying and uses his strength to overpower her as well. Angela doesn't give up and proceeds to perform an attack on Harold again as Ivly uses her powers to grasp his kanabo. Since Harold couldn't use his kanabo, Angela finds the time to strike him with her sword and Harold is sent flying, but soon Angela realizes that it didn't really affect Harold at all. Harold, now back on his feet, seems ferocious and declares that it's time to end this game. Augusta realizes that Angela is exhausted from the fight and asks her if she's alright. Even though she utters that she's fine, Augusta realizes that although none of the injuries were fatal, it would be too dangerous for Angela to continue fighting in this state. He also looks at Evely knowing that an archer's body is more fragile than a warrior and that Evely must have also reached her limit by now. He wonders how to deal with the situation since the difference in their ranks is too big and they can't stop the opponent, but if they don't do anything they will die here. Augusta suddenly gets flashbacks of the incident that took place in the castle years ago, and that he couldn't do anything about it, so he ponders heavily how he can find a way to get out of this situation. As he is thinking about all this, Angela tells Augusta to heal her, asserting that even though her body hasn't recovered enough to use God's chosen lower, but as long as she gets healed by Augusta, she can continue to fight, and that they have a chance of winning. Hearing this, Augusta is worried about Angela that she is seriously injured and will die at this rate. Angela tells Augusta to believe in her, meanwhile Harold just stands there, asking whether they have shared their last words and proclaims that it is useless to talk so much, since they're not going to get out alive anyway. Angela stands back on her feet with her eyes brimming with confidence and asks Evely, who is also ready for the fight, whether she can continue to which she answers positively. Angela charges at Harold, but yet again, her attacks are absolutely futile, while on the contrary, Harold lands a powerful strike using his kanabo. Evely, on the other hand, attacks with an arrow to distract Harold while Angela tries to perform a sneak attack, but much to her surprise, Harold proclaims that he never took his eyes off Angela and smashes her away. Augusta quickly realizes that Angela will die because of the damage that the strike caused and uses his asterisk awakening skill in Finicky Asterisk in order to heal Angela instantly. Angela stands back up again as if nothing happened. This show kicks Harold as he can't seem to comprehend how she still has this power since his attack would have been enough to kill her. A radiant energy beam is emitted from Angela's blade striking Harold that leaves him stunned and furious at the same time and that is when he realizes that it is actually Augusta that is the reason behind everything. He attacks Augusta but gets intercepted by Angela. With no other option left, Angela utilizes her asterisk, God's chosen Scarlet slash asterisk, to strike Harold and finally manage to cause some damage. As Harold is lying on the ground, he exclaims that what he's about to do is the result of their own actions and takes out a mysterious fragment. Upon seeing the fragment, Augusta gets Shotskaiti, wondering if it is what he thinks it is. Harold eats the fragment and transforms into an enormous monster, stating that it is the power of the fragment while Augusta is shocked seeing this. However, much to Harold's surprise, Angela high-fives Augusta and tells him that it's up to him to finish this. Harold doesn't understand what just happened and starts moking them, seeing that they are making the healer battle him. Augusta uses a primary healing skill that causes Harold's arm to burst. Harold is shocked and confused, uttering that Augusta's biggest failure is not having any battle skills, but Augusta turns everything around real quick using his primary healing skill on Harold again, and this time around. Harold swells up and bursts creating an explosion as he is wiped out completely. Evely seems confused about what just happened and utters that isn't Augusta just a beginner healer, to which Angela replies proudly that Augusta is the one who's going to become the strongest beginner healer in the world. Augusta, Angela, and Evely all run towards the exit, but Augusta reminds everyone that the exit is blocked and that they have to rely on their strength in order to get out of this mine and that the elite demon can't be ignored. Evely asks Augusta why there would be a problem since he is here and they can easily deal with the demon, but Augusta explains to her that his power is not convenient and that the demon has a strong intuition because of which it won't let him get close. The trio hears the guards fighting ahead in that direction. Upon arriving, they witness a bunch of guards trying to fight with the elite monster demon. One of the guards exclaims that the man of all the healers has been used up fighting this demon, so they can't take it down. 
Augusta offers to help in healing the guards as they try to fight the demon. As the battle progresses, the beast suddenly goes underground, injuring a lot of guards in the process as Augusta heals them. The demon appears again from under the ground again and wreaks havoc. Augusta asks whether anyone else has mana, so they can heal the fighting guards faster, but there is no one to help him out. The demon keeps on attacking again and again while Augusta is healing everyone as soon as possible, but in this scenario of desperation, Augusta thinks to himself that if this continues, they will all die here. Augusta asks Angela if she can use her power again, but she seems exhausted and tells her that she has reached her limit and can only wield weapons now. Just when things seem lost, Avely claims that she has a way to take care of the beast, but she needs someone to help. She continues that her trait requires wind flow, but the place where the beast is present is not approachable, and that if somehow they can widen the gap, they have a chance at killing the beast. Hearing this, Augusta asks the guards if anyone from them can break the gap, to which one of them replies that the distance is too far and even if his magic hit that spot, it won't be powerful enough to make a difference. One of the guards, holding a sphere that is filled with powerful gunpowder, explains that as long as the distance is almost enough, the gap may explode. Pointing to one of the guards, he commands that since the guard is an archer, he can use the bomb as an arrow and cause the gap to widen. Hearing this, the archer is stunned and tells him that the bomb is very different from an arrow and that it wouldn't be possible to do the task as both of them start arguing with one another. Seeing the argument, Evely suggests that there is another method they could use and by using the monster as a platform to perform a second relay in the air, they may be able to reach it. One of the guards is courageous and offers to help in completing the task. He states that he can withstand at least one attack from the monster and asks Augusto whether he can heal him when he is attacked, to which Augusto replies positively, assuring him that it won't be a problem and that he won't die. The other guards call the volunteer an idiot since he's only a bronze level. Soldier but without listening to them, the guard charges at the monster and is sent flying in the air just as the relay plan was supposed to be. Another guard throws the bomb towards him, but due to the impact with the monster, one of his arm is dislocated but the guard somehow manages to deflect the bomb using his shield and the explosion causes the gap to widen. Avely now with a confident smile on her face takes over the rest of the work and uses her special ability asterisk starburst asterisk to kill the beast, ending this side quest. As Augusta, Angela, and Evely arrive at the Adventurer Guild, Augusta asks Evely that why didn't she use her powers earlier and she used them a little earlier, they wouldn't have faced that much trouble. Evely explains that there are restrictions to her usage of this power and that she can only use it once, after that she can't continue to fight anymore. At the Guild, everyone notices that Augusta has arrived and starts praising him, calling him Legendary Healer and thanking him for all the help he did in the mines. The people at the Guild surround Augusta asking for his autograph, but all of this is really confusing for Augusta and exciting at the same time. Just then, a man asks Augusta if he wants to join his crew. This man is none other than Buck Clive who is a platinum rank adventurer. Angela is silent when Buck offers Augusta the chance to join his team, but Augusta declines and apologizes to Buck that he can't join his team since he already has his own team. Hearing this, Angela's eyes start beaming with light and Buck leaves telling him that he is always welcome to join. Another man, shocked at Augusta's response, tells him that Buck's team is at least gold rank adventurer and questions why he didn't join them, to which Augusta responds by stating that he has his own team as the trio leave the guild. Angela asks Augusta about why he refused the offer to join Buck's crew, and that it would have been easier for him to team up with them. Augusta responds that if they found out he only possesses one primary healing, he would have been rejected. He looks at Angela and with a spark in his eyes tells her that it was only because of Angela that he didn't join. This makes Angela extremely happy as she tells him that they will become the Sturon GS together. They both proceed for a fist bump and Evely is standing there, confused about their enthusiasm. Following this, the trio arrive at the Underworld Pavilion where Anna is waiting for them and greets his brother with a smile, hugging him tightly. Evely enthusiastically utters that it is rare for this many people to be together, so they should head to the nearby bathhouse and take a bath. Augusta looks at Shirley calling her the Lady Boas, to which she orders him to just call her Shirley. With this, Augusta brings out the fragment he obtained after Harold was obliterated. Shirley is surprised to see a fragment of the spiritual core as Augusta proceeds to ask her if there's any place where he could find this. Initially, Shirley tells Augusta that she can only recognize the characteristics of a fragment and doesn't know where to find it, but then tells Augusta to not be disappointed since she has a way to find out the information. She proceeds to explain that in 30 days, Omelopis will hold a grand festival. At that time, the people of Liberal Alliance Chamber of Commerce will come, and she knows someone there that may help them find such things. In a dark room lightened by a candle, a mysterious man with blonde hair stares at the moon and utters whether the collapse of the world has already started. The next day, Augusta wonders if Shirley's friend is a member of the Liberal Alliance Chamber of Commerce. They would certainly not give free information. Augusta realizes that low-level commission gives too little reward. He needs to improve the level of commission. He arrives outside Angela's room and knocks to wake her up, stating that it's time to go to the guild, but notices that the door is unlocked. As he opens the door, Angela is changing her clothes and both of them face an awkward moment. 
Augusta tells Angela that he didn't mean to look at her but is thrown out of the room by Angela. On their way to the guild, Augusta tells Angela that you really didn't know that the door was unlocked and there was someone inside. Hearing this, Angela asks him if he saw anything to which he replies that the sunlight reflection in the room was too strong because of which he could not see anything. Angela forgives Augusta telling him that it was his little sister Anna that left the door unlocked but if there's a next time she'll kill him this scares Augusta as he anxiously tells Angela that there won't be a next time while she looks at him furiously. Angela and Augusta arrive at Guild where they are greeted by the receptionist. Augusta asks the receptionist about the new commissions, but the receptionist has other things in her mind since she starts to develop emotions towards Augusta as he gets close to her. She tells her that it's too early in the morning and that he can do whatever he wants to at night to which Augusta seems confused and realizes that the receptionist's personality is completely different from before. He asks Angela to help her in this situation as Angela furiously exclaims that she won't do anything tonight and wants the commission handed right now. The receptionist takes out the scrolls and hands Augusta a C-rank mission, but advises him to not take that mission. Angela and Augusta inquire the reason behind this to which the receptionist informs that all the adventurers that have taken on this mission before have never returned. She continues to explain that there's a ghost and monster in Dinayu village that makes it hidden. Hearing this, Angela responds that they'll take the mission without any hesitation, but Augusta is shocked at this decision and mockingly asks Angela what kind of brain does she have. Angela tells Augusta that it's not a problem since he's a cleric, to which he responds that he's only a beginner-level healer. Augusta and Angela arrive at Dinayu village. They meet an old man there who tells them that children have been missing for months and this is making everyone in the village feel uneasy. This man is none other than the village chief himself. The chief further tells them that if this continues, they will have to abandon the whole village and move, but that will not only cost a lot of manpower and materials, but also may not be able to get everyone's approval. The chief bows down in front of them and begs them to help the village. After leaving the chief's place, Augusta wonders whether they'd be able to finish such a difficult task, but Angela tells him that since she's been asked to do this, she has no other way. Augusta ponders that he should have brought Evely with him on this mission since her abilities could be utilized in this open air. Just then, a girl arrives asking Augusta if he's the adventurer from Omelopus, to which he responds positively, further inquiring who the girl is. The girl, very drifted in her attitude towards Augusta, asks him if he has a girlfriend and if he has any particular requirements. This confuses Augusta as the girl introduces herself as Nadia, and that she will become Augusta's girlfriend. Angela, however, breaks the scene and exclaims that they have important work to do. Grabbing Augusta by his arm, she starts to drag him with her. On seeing this, Midia asks if Angela is Augusta's girlfriend, to which Angela responds that she's not the girlfriend of this nasty guy, and after hearing this, Midia wastes no time in grabbing Augusta by the arm and asks him to accompany her. Nedia brings Augusta and Angela to the village North Forest. Augusta explains that according to the village legend, there is an abandoned house in the forest with invisible ghosts and ghouls. He further explains that in order to verify whether all of this is actually true, the only option is to visit the abandoned house location. Augusta tells Nidia that since the place for which they are headed is really dangerous, she should wait behind until they arrive, but Nidia seems worried and tells Augusta to not leave her behind since all her friends are disappearing one by one, and she's worried that it'll be her turn next. Nidia asks Augusta if he dislikes her because she's young, continuing to tell him that she's a mature woman and will kiss Augusta many times and is even ready to become the mother of his children, as she literally begs him to not leave her behind. Augusta pats her on the head and tells her to not worry about anything because Angela and him will solve this problem. Angela and Augusta embark on the journey in the direction of the abandoned house while explaining how the previous adventurers disappeared in this place, Augusta realizes that Angela is not paying attention to what he is trying to say and seems lost. Angela grabs the corner of the coat that Augusta is wearing and as he inquires the reason behind it, asking if she is scared, Angela gets enraged and tells Augusta that she will never hold his arm ever again. Just then, the bushes start rattling out of nowhere and this causes Angela to jump in fear in the arms of Augusta only to find out that it was only a rabbit. Angela punches Augusta in the face calling him a pervert to which he responds that it was actually Angela who chickened out and jumped up in his arms. Angela clears it to Augusta that nothing like that happened and claims that she can feel very scary guys around here but doesn't know where they are. Just then, another sound startles Angela again, and she hugs Augusta in fear and another awkward situation is created. Following all these awkward moments, Augusta and Angela finally arrive at the abandoned house and Augusta realizes that the house doesn't look very shabby and looks just like any other normal house. Angela exclaims that she can't walk any further and falls to the ground for some rest and Augusta tells her that it's all because of her they both feel so exhausted. Angela tries to open the door to enter into the house, but the door is locked, so Augusta suggests that they should find another entrance to the house. While they both are trying to find another entrance, Angela calls out Augusta to look at something. She tells him that there's a small plantation next to the house and Augusta ponders if someone is actually living at this place. He picks out a leaf from the plantation and realizes that it's a tea leaf, but Angela proclaims that it is a variety she has never seen before. 
Augusta tells her that it's Broadleaf T, and suddenly they hear the footsteps of someone behind them and Augusta inquires about who it is. A woman named Mrs. Snow appears and counter questions them as to who they are and what are they doing in her house. Angela apologizes that they didn't know people were living in the house, but Mrs. Snow realizes that they are adventurers by looking at the way they are dressed and takes them inside the house. Inside the house, Mrs. Snow offers tea to both Angela and Augusta and tells them that this is all she has right now to offer. Augusta tells Mrs. Snow that she's too kind while Angela adds that the tea is good and it's best to have a cup of tea like this after the journey. Mrs. Snow asks Angela and Augusta whether they are a couple since they didn't see anyone else around the area to which Angela is stunned and replies that her and Augusta are just teaming partners. Augusta asks Mrs. Snow why people have been claiming that this place is abandoned since Mrs. Snow is living there after all to which she responds that it's because of that incident that people don't want to come here. They ask what the incident was and Mrs. Snow explains that one night many years ago she gave birth to a baby boy named Hope, but sadly Hope was born with some physical defects because of which the people of the village and even her husband thought that Hope was a monster, so she had no other option but to take Hope away and live in the forest. Mrs. Snow continues to explain that after her child died, a village feared that the spirit of her child would come back for revenge and because of this no villagers ever come to this side. Augusta apologizes to Mrs. Snow about bringing up her past, but she doesn't seem worried and tells them that she'll get more snacks for them and leaves. Just as Angela is about to pick up the teacup in order to have another sip of tea, Augusta stops her, which makes her a little angry at first, and she asks Augusta why he did what he just did, to which Augusta tells her to not say anything, and that something is wrong with the tea. Augusta explains it to Angela that the broadleaf tea they are drinking is very different from all the broadleaf teas he's ever had and that he suspects the tea is poisoned. Angela, still confused, doesn't believe Augusta and tells him that maybe he is overthinking everything, but Augusta tells her to look carefully around and observe the surroundings. He explains that if someone lives alone for such a long time, some of the household goods or items will definitely be missing, since the villagers all think that this place is deserted and none of them ever mentioned Mrs. Snow, and since Mrs. Snow has never had any contact with the villagers, so where did all these things that are present in her house coming from? Angela tries to cut herself so that she bleeds the poison out of her body, but Augusta tells her that it's not possible to force the poison out of her body just by bleeding out. Just then, Mrs. Snow arrives with handmade pastries, but Angela is furious at Mrs. Snow and yells at her. She asks her where all the children are and the adventurers that are missing, but just then, she feels that her body can't move and realizes that she got careless. Augusta declares that the Mrs. Snow right in front of them is indeed the real culprit of the disappearances that have taken place, and suddenly, the face of Mrs. Snow takes a demonic form as she smiles creepily. Angela, now on her knees, asks Mrs. Snow as to why she did everything and was it to avenge the death of her child. Mrs. Snow tells them that if the villagers had not treated her the way they did, they would have never been punished. But she adds further that this is what the villagers deserve while having a smile on her face. Augusta tries to make her understand that whatever she's doing is too much and that more people are falling into misfortune because of this. But hearing this, Mrs. Snow tells Augusta that she hates bystanders, the people that stand at the top of the moral ladder and point out what's right and wrong without any accountability. She angrily replies to Augusta that people like him know nothing and that he shouldn't pass any sarcastic comments since he doesn't know what she feels like. Mrs. Snow tells Augusta that she only wants to live a peaceful life with her child in this forest without any interruption from anyone, but everyone makes things difficult for her and her child. Then, with an evil smile on her face and eyes that want redemption, she declares that she'll never let the people of this village go and will kill anyone who tries to stop her. Augusta questions Mrs. Snow that what makes her think she can kill them, but to his surprise, she tells him that she already has a check on all the adventurers that are registered in the guild and that she knows each one like the back of her hand. With an evil smile on her face and now having sharp elongated nails, she exclaims that she knows Angela is the strongest in the team, but she can't even move now because of the poison in her body. She mocks Augusta asking him what can a beginner healer like him do to her at all, but is surprised when Augusta uses his beginner healing skill and causes vines and bark to grab a hold of Mrs. Snow while he takes Angela and runs out of the house. As they are trying to flee, Angela inquires from Augusta about why he is running away to which he replies that Mrs. Snow is just an ordinary person tainted by power and in actuality there is someone else that is the source of the power for her. Mrs. Snow attacks Augusta from behind and charges towards him to land a killing blow, but just then Augusta uses his healing ability to form a cocoon-shaped structure that surrounds both Angela and Augusta and saves them from Mrs. Snow's attack. Mrs. Snow is furious that she couldn't finish her target and wonders how can Augusta use elemental magic since he's only a beginner and rage she screams to call out her son Asterisk Hope Asterisk. On her calling, Hope emerges from the forest and is a huge chief-ranked demon that has the face of a baby, but is terrifying to look at. 
Inside the protective cocoon, Angela is worried about Augusta's wound and tells him that they have to move quickly since the demon Mrs. Snow has summoned is by far the strongest demon they've ever came up against, but Augusta tells her that they can't go anywhere. Angela suggests Augusta to leave her behind and go alone since the cocoon can't protect them for long, but Augusta explains it to her that since his magic can exceed the limits of wound healing and is not an ordinary magic that will only heal a person to a fixed level and not more than that, so he can use this ability to restore Angela in her normal state, and that the damage could be diverted using his healing abilities. He further explains that he'll use the healing magic to speed up Angela's metabolism to eradicate the poison in her body, but since this is the first time he will perform something like this, he needs her help with it. He pulls Angela closer to his body and Angela agrees to what Augusta wants to do. Both of them look at one another with confidence and Angela tells Augusta to make her body a mess in the hopes that somehow it will work and will heal her. And that's how the first part of this manual ends. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2, also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.